Good morning, welcome to today's video. As you know on this channel, I like to sometimes interview very inspirational people. Today is a good one. I'm heading to Giro, Chris is gonna join us as well. Wait till you hear this story. Fancy seeing you here. How are you doing, man? You, you survived. Yeah, just it's about. Good. Survived the, uh, the furnace of Lucifer heat wave in Europe um, and all of the traffic. Amazing so. ride. For, uh, for viewers who aren't aware who this is, this is Matt. He did the Transcontinental and came, what, sixth? Uh, seventh. 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 In a, there was a final race at the end with Nelson Trees. Oh, uh, it was pretty close, wasn't it? We oh, had a 200 kilometer, um, basically time trial from the Greek border to the he finish. He stepped it up as well. Yeah, I, I had heat stroke on the, the, the last few climbs. Got to like 49 degrees. Um, it was pretty horrific, actually. Just horrible. <laughs> but uh, no, well, you got tan. Good. No, he hasn't. He hasn't got tan. It's all of the uh, the grime that gets on your arm. It just protects you, you know, road Super grime and stuff. So. Insane. So wait, how, uh, did he beat you then? He beat me by seven minutes. Oh. So a 4,000 kilometer race decided. Well, seven, sixth place decided by seven minutes. Yeah. So. But oh, no, it was good, it was good. I said last year he was eating double pizzas, this year he must have been eating triple pizzas. Yeah. To, uh... I'm just enjoying this jersey. Look at the sleeves on it. This is nice. This is a new one, I've not seen this one. This is a new one, it's like the latest um, body fit race jersey for Giro Prestige. But I'm sure my viewers will agree, uh, we should catch up at some point and Absolutely. get some stories down inside the camera. Oh man, I've got some tales got to some tell. <laughs> yeah. Cheers man, take it easy. Uh, I got a free coffee. Because I hid a minion. I know where it is. Do you? Yeah. Does that mean I get a free coffee or not? No, because you didn't hide a minion. So if I hide something else in there, I get a free something. Well, if you get, if you agree that with the um the, the, the baristas. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here he is. James Golding. James Reading. Still green today. <laughs> Welcome to I'm the videos. Very green. Thank you very much. What are we doing today? We're going for a ride. We're going for a ride. And then we're going to talk about things. Yes. Past, present and future. No, I ain't lonely, but no, I said lonely because these bitches tricky and helping my growing. Look in my eyes and please tell me I'm no one. Been drinking too much, but wait, can you please pull one? I'm thinking I'm sinking and feeling like dicking. Do David Amber impression. What can you see? I can see fish. Lots of them. What type? I don't know. Little They're little ones. <laughs> Diddy ones. They've got that. Yeah. Chris is looking over the edge. They're probably getting, oh, that, that big fat fairy walrus. Nice bike. Bike. Oh, wait. Well, why isn't it nice? <laughs> it's a nice bike. It just needs clean. It'd be mm. nice if it had a clean. It needs a clean and some um, work off. Yeah, these are fucking jet wash. Look at the amount of mud spray on the back. That's like, look at it in there. You're collecting it, Francis. Yeah, but that's that's because it's like I ride my bike. Yeah, but it's like you know when you buy a guitar and it's all it's all fucked up. Yeah, and you pay more. So this you, is true. How much are you going to sell? Are you going to aim to sell that bike for, mate? No, it's a collector's item. So you're going to go to a museum next to Eddie Merckx's bike. It could do. I, I've been there. So have I. Yeah. We went to the Merckx factory in Belgium. Did you? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I tried to sell him this bike. <laughs> they weren't having it. 107 pounds. You have got a very, very, very interesting and cool life and story to tell. <laughs> interesting and cool is kind of an interesting statement, really. <laughs> kind of, well, it kind of is. It's like full of ups and downs. Yeah, you know, it's. Um, I suppose in a way, it kind of yeah, it is cool now. Um, yeah, I'm probably I'm in a better place now than. And I feel like I'm always saying I'm in a better place now than I've ever been. But genuinely now I, I feel that I've kind of, I've got that kind of where I want it to be. There's a lot more that I want to do and there's a lot more I want to try and achieve. But including your bathroom. Including getting the bathroom finished. The for biggest my, challenge for, of my, for my lovely wife. That's, we've got to get the bathroom finished because then we've got to start the loft conversion. Um, but that's, that's a whole other video that is. <laughs> I used to ride mountain bikes as a kid and I, I, I used to race mountain bikes cross country and I used to race downhill and I kind of I stopped racing when I was um, sort of 17, 18 because I'd got to get a proper job. Um, but I'd, I'd, I'd never been anywhere near a road bike in my life because, you know, don't forget the, 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 that. Road bike's not cool, mate. Uh, that's, not, that's, cool. that's not cool. They're my brake pads that have just <laughs> fallen out. What? How about that? 
That's amazing. Check Are you sponsored by Trip? No. Okay, shit bike, mate. <laughs> I had to stop riding because I needed to get what was regarded as a proper job at the time. And um, I, I didn't touch another bike then for, for years. I literally got rid of everything that I'd ever had. And then um, I suppose a good way of kind of, you know, touching on the fact that it's, it's got an interesting and cool life is that, you know, if you'd have asked me 10 years ago where I see myself in 10 years, I wouldn't have given you the answer of standing next to the river talking to you guys. I wouldn't have kind of... I wouldn't have talked about the amount of rides that I've done. It would have been completely different. It probably would have been money orientated and you know car orientated or or house or you know holiday and and that kind of stuff really. Um, but then in in 2008, everything kind of changed. And I think, and I try and use the the context of it carefully. But um, I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, November the 13th 2008 I was pulled into a room and doctors told me that uh, they'd found an 11 and a half centimetre tumour wedged between my spine kidney and bowel which um, due to where it was was unoperable so we were going to have to go down a chemotherapy route and the chemo was going to be quite aggressive uh, but we'd, we'd, we'd just kind of watch how that went and then after the three courses of chemo we'd kind of see what had happened the the intention was that um, I'd have a week of chemo and then have kind of three weeks off, then another week and then three weeks off. By So I started that kind of mid-December. Uh, long story short, by February 2009, I'd gone from 14 stone to six and I'd got less than 5% chance of survival and was being rushed into emergency surgery. Um, Phil Barrow Granath, who um, was the surgeon that looked after me, he and a couple of his colleagues spent about six hours operating at midnight on a Friday night to save my life. And then off the back of that, I was kept in an induced coma for a further two weeks. And literally coming out of, out of intensive care onto a high dependency ward, I weighed just under six stone and couldn't move. I could lift my own head off the pillow and that was, that was about it. But there was something that kind of, I almost wanted to go back to being sort of 18 again and riding a bike for some reason and, I'd, and and that was kind of my first real thoughts of wanting to ride um, but I needed to be able to walk before I could do that and, and I'd got this goal of wanting to get to the bathroom which could have literally been right next to me and I wouldn't have been able to get to it um, but I could wiggle my toes and slowly I could wiggle my toes and then I could you know wiggle my other toes and then I could move my ankle and I could move my fingers and I could lift my arm and so from kind of uh, early March through to sort of mid-April, um, I learned to stand up and learned to be able to walk two steps. Um, and then I, I managed to go home. Um, I had to eat as much as I could over that period of time, so I literally broke everything down into little goals. But it wasn't until I'd kind of gone home to live with my mum and my nan that my recovery accelerated. Um, somewhat because at 28 years old living with your mum and your nan is, is not somewhere where you really want to be. Each day was each day and you broke each day down because it was it was tough you know. That When I woke up in intensive care I'd got 45 stitches in my stomach, I'd got two tubes in my right hand side that actually brought my bowel out onto the surface um, because there'd been a hole in it. Um, they'd, I'd got two tubes in my left hand side, I'd got one in my back uh, four in my chest, three under my arm, and then there was two cannulas in each arm. So, you know, no matter how bad it gets, it's never gonna be, hopefully, never gonna be that bad again. So after a, a period of time of being at home and them then going and putting my stomach back together, I kind of was told to go back to normal. Um, obviously, the idea of normal after you've kind of been in that situation is something quite difficult to get your head around because what's what's normal what what is normal now um, and I, I kind of started going out again and probably drinking too much and probably partying a bit too hard and it wasn't probably until um, a few weeks after my birthday which is July I'd been to see my surgeon and he told me that putting my stomach back together had gone really well um, and that the tumor had showed signs of just getting smaller and smaller so um, he, never, he didn't want to see me again and, and that was fine. Um, and it was a few weeks after that that I kind of just sort of realized that I was kind of wasting this opportunity. I'd kind of been given a second chance and 
I was almost, you know, these people that had put a lot of time and a lot of effort in. And I just felt that kind of going back to normal was kind of wasting everything that everybody had done for me and the efforts they'd put in. So I decided that I wanted to try and do something to give back to the people that had been there to help me. And I looked for different challenges. I looked at kind of the Midwest challenge, which was six days riding in the Midwest. I looked at a Rocky Mountain challenge, um, again, about six days in the Rockies. But for me, none of them really kind of, none of them were really challenges. For me, weighing in hospital, weighing six stone, being unable to lift my own head off the pillow was a challenge. The idea of riding a bike for five or six days wasn't, wasn't really a challenge, you know? So I, I came up with this idea of riding across America. Um, LA to Miami. Um, that is a challenge. That is a challenge, <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, I've so got, is this massive horn. You know, by this time I'm only riding sort of 20, 30 miles at a time. I'd been and rode five miles around the local reservoir and it, it borderline put me in a right state. If you can ride 10 miles, you can ride 12. If you can ride 12, you can ride 14. If you can ride 14, you can ride 16 and so on. And you know, if, Effectively, if you can ride 10 miles, you can ride 100 miles. It just the pace of what you do it in is probably going to, and the time that it takes is probably going to be a little bit different. We went out to America. Everything was going fine. I celebrated my 30th birthday in Austin, Texas, and then um, which was the 4th of July. Um, and six days later, I was hit by a truck just outside New Orleans, at 60, uh, 70 miles an hour from behind. It broke three of my ribs, smashed up my elbow, and wrecked my bike. You know. Um, but I'm laying by the side of the road thinking, yeah, it's bad, but you know, it's not as bad as it was. I'm not back in hospital, weighing six stone, unable to lift my own head off. The 70 pillow. miles an hour? Yeah. And yeah. it? It put me 120 feet down the road. Um, six months later, I went back to LA and I did the whole ride again, 3,473 miles in 24 days. Um, came back from there, well, whilst I was there, got a phone call from Louise telling me that um, she was pregnant um, which was a somewhat of a surprise because I was told there was more chance of the moon hitting earth than ever being able to have children uh, Louise was told that she'd probably never be able to have children um, so this was kind of a bit of a it was a real shock but it was kind of a good it was a good shock but it was an unnerving shock because I didn't really know how to deal with it because I'd kind of put this idea of having kids completely out of my head the idea of me having children was on the basis that if it was going to happen they were kind of going to be somebody else's children um, and, and not technically mine um, came back from there I rode across Mexico then I went and um, I went riding with the hot chili guys over in Mallorca um, met Stephen Roach and, and a few others and um, then I went out to Annecy I did some riding over there for a week and when I came back from there I got diagnosed with a second tumour um, they found another one on the opposite side following another scan, um, which would need to be removed and then chemo and radio and everything else. But it, it took, so I kind of got diagnosed in the June and we couldn't find a surgeon to do it. Um, we finally found a surgeon to do it. And I, I did the Hot Chili London Paris. I did the Great Swim Series, uh, did a few other events and then went out and did the Hot Chili Alpine Challenge over in Annecy. Um, three days racing over there, finished on the Saturday flew home on the Sunday, had the tumour removed on the Monday. Freddie was born two weeks after that. Two weeks later, I started chemo. And then four weeks later, I started radiotherapy. Um, and that was, um, I suppose it took a little while really to kind of sink in the fact that, we'd ha that I'd had it again. I just kind of went with the flow of it. I carried on doing everything that I'd got planned with all the, the riding and, and events that I wanted to do. So that was kind of where my focus was really. Um, so then after the, after chemo and, and radio and Christmas and then getting used to, to having the little guy around and um, obviously that was 2012 and then kind of the Olympics and everything else that was going on was there was plenty of stuff going on that kept my mind busy it wasn't until after that that I decided I wanted to go for the seven day world record which um, at the time was was kind of less it was about 1560 miles at the time April the 12th we were in St Malo um, got a bit of a, a crew together and everything that, that we needed to, to be able to do this and off we went and it was kind of it was going all right really um, banked 1100 miles in four days and the crew called it on day four they just said no more it's the roads have changed the weather's changed I wasn't looking too good 
Um, so they made the decision to, to pull the plug. A good friend of mine, um, as you know, Bruce Berkeley, also went and had a crack at the seven day and he put it at sort of uh, 1760. Um, so he pushed that record up higher by about 200 miles to, to what it was originally. So obviously the goalposts had moved yet again. Um, so it was going to take a little bit more work than, uh, than originally planned. I picked a bike up and carried on riding a bit more than I'd already been riding. And the view was that I would go for the seven day world record again. Um, and then we'd see where we go from there. And um, June the 19th, which was um, summer solstice week, we started. Um, and I, you know, as we were just saying a minute ago, we started, I, I started pedaling, but everybody else that had been involved with it was there. Um, I'd got Dean Downing looking after me um, in terms of in, in the car and making sure that I kind of got what I needed. He's not allowed to feed you from the car, but he, he's allowed to be with you. Um, and we did 1,766.2 miles in seven days, um, averaging 252 miles a day, um, which gave us a new Guinness seven day world record. Um, I, I'm still not sure that it's really sank in. Um, because Congratulations, I, dude. <laughs> I, I didn't, yeah, but I kind of, it's difficult because I don't see that, I see that everybody can achieve it. Anybody could go and do it. Anybody could achieve it if they wanted to. It's about breaking that down and, and working out what you need to do to get there. And, you know, the truth of it is when you, you, you ride a bike enough, you, you know, you slow it down and you stretch your miles out and then you speed up a bit and stretch your miles out and you, anybody could, could achieve that. And I, so I've been, and, I've been and done it. I'm, I'm pleased with what we achieved. Um, I'd like to have got it a little bit higher really I'd like to have got a bit more out of it than than 1766 um, didn't do it again yeah I think so <laughs> there's a couple of other things there's there's one that I'd, I'd really like to do but um, it's a bit secretive because it there's a there's a few favors need to be pulled in and um, a few things that need to be asked before we can talk about that but I'll make sure you know first you tell me off camera yeah. Yeah. I want to do 50 school talks a year. So I want to go into 50 schools all across the country and speak to 14 to 18 year olds um, about achieving their dreams, about sticking with their dreams and aspirations and how working hard at school and, and in certain or in the subjects that they're strong at will actually really help them with their sporting or ambitions or their personal ambitions because by showing that you can work hard in these areas, which I never did at school, um, people will actually believe that you're then going to work hard at your at your dreams and aspirations and they'll kind of they'll probably support you more if you can show that you work hard at something that you don't necessarily enjoy so for me kind of one step at a time is is the strap line but I seriously believe that one step at a time we can we can achieve anything that we want and the impossible is achievable yeah. thank you <laughs> yeah, put your brakes James, back you're in. right over your back wheel only We've got no grub screws in there now. What, they just came we out? Got, we just want some Sigma. Get some screws and Sigma. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, right, okay. I could give you popping in there anyway. How are you? Hey, man. I'm good, thanks. Good to see you. Good My see friend. you. You're sweating. <laughs> I'm really, really hot. I've it's been holding warm. this camera still for like it's warm. 20 minutes now. It's warm. Hit of motivation. Can't speed. Dog content. Dog. Oh, oh look at this content. geezer. Ooh, oh, that's a nice puppy. Hello. What is this? Lawrence. <laughs> You're the puppy. Yeah, that's Chris. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm hairy as well. Welcome, Welcome to Sigma Sports. Sport. No hand movements. Just pretend it's <laughs> <it's laughs> a movie, it. dubbed over. Yeah. Martial arts movie. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Sigma Sport. <laughs> My name is Lucy Manel. I have a small head. That's <laughs> why I don't like it. My S works I've got at home is not worth the same money as it was three months ago. Oh. <laughs> SL6 ultra light. How light oh. is ultra light? Uh, very light. I actually don't know. That's a really nice light. Great employee. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, I'm on. Helmet screws. Oh god. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you. much for your story. I hope it's not waffle, really. I like Francis, this. Francis, James is so much taller than you. He is, look. I mean, <laughs> Well, this is me holding the camera at head well, This height. is the thing though, it's like I'm six foot four and 86 kilos. <laughs> yeah, it's like, everyone's like, oh, right. You're a big man. And you still did hills when you did your seven day. 
18,000 metres of climbing over seven days. But that also means 18,000 metres of downhill. Does it? Well, technically speaking. <laughs>